Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on Android app basic components. So what does an Android app um, typically have? Uh, and the answer is there are four things, layouts, activities, resources, and manifest. So this lecture will split into several videos. We'll focus on all of these and introduce you to the basics of an Android app. It will equip you to understand how the, uh, how the different components are working or communicating with each other and what does a typical app um, contain and what are the places uh, which you can manipulate to modify your app. But before getting there, we should, we should try and understand what an MVC, the model view controller, design pattern is. MVC uh, or model view controller uh, is a design pattern like several others um, uh, to, to enhance an object oriented program design and implementation and maintenance. It was developed in 1979 and it is, it is useful because it improves decoupling, code reuse, and parallel development of components. It's a predominant uh, design pattern for developing graphical user interface apps. So let's try to understand what MVC is. Well, it has three components, three broad components, model, VR, view, and controller, obviously. Uh, the model, is what models the real world data relevant to your project. Uh, so for example, um, a database of students, if it's a student related app, you, know, you have a list of students uh, in a class and the, the Java classes uh, that model that information of students into say um, a class that has a name as a string, um, GPA as a double, you know, phone number as a string and things like that. So that is your model. Then view is the visual representation of the model for interacting with the user. So you can present a list of uh, students in that app um, as say, uh, uh, you know, a clickable list where just the name is displayed. Um, so that's a, that's a view for the entire list. You click on one of those students and it opens up and shows you the details of that student. So that's another visual representation of the same information, but only a selected piece, let's say, okay? But all of that, what you see um, uh, in a web, web app or in a game app um, or, at, or a phone app um, is, is basically rendered because of a view, which is a visual, visual representation. And then controller, is largely the business logic, um, which decides how how the model should be, you know, um, updated uh, because of what interactions user does on or through the view. So these are the three broad components, um, and we'll now talk about how they interact with each other. So typically, you as a user start interacting on the view. That is, you, know, you may click on something, swipe something, um, or type something, and so on. So view then um, calls methods on the controller, or in other words, sends a signal to the controller that the user has interacted in a certain way. Controller in turn, if appropriate, calls the model, and manipulates the model by calling appropriate methods on it. You know, typically a model would, would only expose getters and setters to the controller. So the controller can call setters to make changes. For example, you know, again, continuing with that student app example, if you have um, updated someone's grades um, or allowed someone to you know, update their name or well, a better example would be update their address or something like that, um, that happens on the view, you type in the address and then click submit button. So the controller is invoked from the view and then controller goes and calls the setter method for the address, let's say, 
Okay, so that's what happens. Now, after that change has happened, the change should be reflected back on the view. And controller then calls some sort of an update method, which updates uh, the view to match the model. So that's a very typical cycle of changes in the MVC pattern. The, the main advantage or benefit here is the controller um, is invoked only when some changes are made on the view and those changes are then reflected on the model and um, uh, well, the changes are made on the model and reflected back on the view in a very clean way, um, of course, based on how it's implemented, uh, but conceptually it can be very clean. Um, another advantage is um, you can have the same model and multiple views. And this is you know, more and more true uh, these days where we have uh, the same backend model for a lot of things that we do, but different ends, that is the view and the controller can be different for different devices. For example, um, I'm sure all of you check emails on your mobile phones, possibly on, uh, on, on a tablet device, as well, you also have a web client for the emails, like you know, Gmail uh, provides one. You may also have installed a native app <clears throat> on your laptop or desktop device. So there are these three, four different types of views and controllers, but the model is still the same. So by decoupling uh, these components like this, we can ensure that there is a consistent model for different different devices that is different views um, and we just need to provide different views and then appropriate controllers a key point um, you know especially with the pure mvc conception is the model and view they do not talk to each other all the communication happens only through the controller okay again you Many of you are perhaps aware of MVC, but I think this uh, review uh, or recap was, uh, was necessary and helpful. All right, now going forward, um, let's look at the four components of, uh, of a typical Android app. First of them um, will be what, what is a view in this picture? So basically layouts. Before looking at a layout, Let's talk about the format of the layouts. It's an XML file. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, which is a form of um, you know, the, the markup languages in the same family as HTML. Um, it's used to encode documents um, in a hierarchical but arbitrary structure if required. The advantage is it is both machine and human readable. It is extensible in the sense it allows users to create any tags. For example, the text view that we saw when we talked about the, um, the, the IDE and design editor in the Android Studio. Unlike HTML where you are stuck with H1, H2, et cetera, and then you know, for bold and italic, you can't really create your own tag for different purpose. HTML is used for a different purpose, um, but here you can create your own tag. Uh, and then give it some meaning. Um, there are equivalents, uh, lightweight equivalents of XML, uh, particularly JSON is very popular over the web. Um, YAML is another format. Um, and you know there are several similar formats which can be translated back and forth from XML. Um, but XML also has a robust um, schema definition and validation tools. And perhaps that's the reason why uh, Google chose to go with XML. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, an XML layout file. So here we see our activity main.xml that we have seen in a slightly different view um, you know, a little while back in another uh, video, that is the IDE video. What you see here um, is you know, the, on the left, you have this project tool window, and in that you see the activity main XML, which is over here. 
the XML code is at the center, and then the rendering of that XML code is on the right. So now we'll look uh, in look inside the XML file. So here is the code copied uh, from the XML file, and uh, let's look at the different components of this. Any XML file will begin with the XML declaration, which is the first line over here. In this case, it says it uses the XML version one and uh, the UTF-8 encoding. Um, in general, you can see XML version two, for example, um, on the web, but all our Android files are going to have XML version one and the same encoding. Uh, this will be the first line in every XML file you create or the ID has created for you and you use and manipulate and uh, you know, make changes to it. Do not touch this line, do not change this line. It has to be there verbatim for the file to be properly used in your project. Okay, next we see an element um, of type Android X dot constraint layout dot widget dot constraint layout. So this element or entity opens here at the top and closes here at the bottom. As you can see, it's encompassing another uh, element called text view. This is how XML creates hierarchical structures. You have parent elements and child elements. Uh, and then those children can have their own children um, and so on. I'm pretty sure many of you are thinking about trees by now, and that is exactly what this is. So XML documents can create hierarchical trees um, of these elements, and that's how you can represent hierarchical data. So the element at the center here, which is a child element of the constraint layout, is a text view. Um, and we have seen this text view before. So we'll, we'll come and talk about uh, the information inside these elements in a second. But again, to reinforce that tree or hierarchical structure, this is what these two elements represent. The red constraint layout is the parent or the root element uh, in this case, and text view is the child element inside that constraint layout. And this creates the picture that we have seen where you have the outer rectangular screen and a text view uh, inside it at the center, in fact. Yeah, so what you see inside uh, each element, XML element here, um, is, is a bunch of attributes. Attributes are basically key value pairs where the key is on the left-hand side of every equal sign and the value is on the right-hand side of every equal sign. As you can see, um, the right-hand side has, is, is a string in all these cases, and well, it has to be a string. There are several interesting ones. Uh, let's just talk about a few of them. Here you see tools colon context, and then you have a dot main activity. Uh, the dot here stands for a relative path from the root of the, um, the, the project, um, and you have the main activity class uh, inside it. So, that's what we are talking about. That this XML file is connected with the main activity dot Java um, Java class on the other side, and that's where uh, that's that's what our controller is. You also see a layout width and layout height attribute here. Um, it's set to match parent uh, for both of those. So this constraint layout is going to span the entire screen of your app, that's what it means. Inside the text view, however, you, you see the layout width is wrap content and height is also wrap content. Um, so we are not going to span the entire screen with just our text view, obviously. Uh, we want to wrap the width and height of the text view um, at, at the boundaries of the text. So it will only take the size required for displaying the string, hello world which goes here. So this is how you, you get to see the string hello world on, on your device when you run the greetings app. So Android text, Android colon text is the attribute 
key or attribute name and hello world is the string value. Um, now, when you made changes to your app in your uh, uh, first assignment, this is where you, you have perhaps changed it to hello, comma, your name. And the last uh, piece of attributes here um, or a set of attributes here is all these constraints that are put on the text view. Um, here you can see it is, it is constrained to the bottom of its parent. I mean, the bottom of the text view is aligned to the bottom of the parent, left of the text view is aligned to the left of the parent and so on. So it's being pulled equally from all the sides and that's why it goes and sits at the center. We'll talk about constraint layouts a little bit later in the class. We are going to use another, um, uh, another uh, layout uh, for many apps going forward before we can go and you know, start manipulating in the constraint layout. But this is something FYI at this point that these constraints make the text view appear at the center. So let's take a look at what, what you see inside um, the, the layout uh, editor, the design editor at this point, okay? Um, the screenshot I have where it's modified to hello Swaroop at this point. So that is the only change compared to what we saw on the last screen. Here, once again, you'll recall you have uh, the code view here on the left the design view here on the, in the middle. Um, then you have the palette and the component tree um, uh, between the two. And on the right, you have attributes. Okay. So um, we have talked about what this XML file looks like, and we also see how it shows up on a screen. Now let's go ahead and make certain changes uh, to, this, to this XML file. The first change we are going to make is select the text view. So the attributes here are for the text view. Um, you can select the text view in the component tree. That's usually easier or in the design view or in the code view. Um, but you know, the component tree is usually easier uh, because they are just clickable buttons right there. Anyway, so when you click that, it will show this ID as empty. This is where you can provide a unique identifier to be used in mainly in Java code to access this widget and do manipulations on that, but also sometimes in the XML code itself to position other widgets relative to this particular widget. So let's go ahead and give it a name, an identifier. Let's call it greeting. We'll use this identifier greeting in the Java code to manipulate this widget in a few seconds. Another thing is the text. Um, you could modify the text right here in the code view or here in the attributes view. So just for now, go ahead and change the text to hello comma your name to welcome, okay? These changes will be reflected on the screen, um, on, on, the, on the layout like this. So the ID greeting goes over here in uh, the code view as well as the component tree. And then the text welcome has updated over here, in both these places. So once again, the code view, the component tree and the design view are basically reflections of each other. So this was a brief overview of the layouts, um, the X, what an XML file is, how you can manipulate that, et cetera. Um, we'll, we'll pause here and we'll come back to discuss the next component that is the activity.